Welcome to the Saving Lives Podcast. I'm Eddie Joe. Today is the 5th of March of 2021, and the article that I'm going to be using as a reference to today's podcast was published just yesterday in JAMA, which is one of the highest impact factor journals. So they're supposed to only publish the good stuff. But I got to say, I'm not, I'm not so convinced with this particular study, which is titled Effect of Ivermectin on Time to Resolution of Symptoms Among Adults with Mild COVID-19. I definitely recommend that you read this article for yourself and don't trust me. And I say this all the time with all the different articles that I talk about because we can interpret the data in different ways. One of the things that really caught my eye with this study were all the big name influencers on Twitter as well as Instagram uh, who are very reputable doctors and very reputable medicine folks who just went ahead and and digested these data into a quick snippet like ivermectin doesn't work. Well, uh, it's it's very frustrating because we don't know if ivermectin works or it doesn't work. And this study gives us absolutely no insight whatsoever into whether it works or it doesn't work. And here's why. Here's my spoiler alert. And I'm sorry if I'm a little bit fired up about this, but I think people are being intellectually dishonest because they have an underlying agenda. And this, that's not what medicine is supposed to be. Medicine is not supposed to be an agenda. It's supposed to be about interpreting data properly and honestly. And as much as I want this to be a well-conducted randomized controlled trial, I have to state that they were looking at the wrong patient population. And this is why reading the actual study matters. And this is why it's important. And that's why it's necessary to actually understand what went into conducting this trial and every trial for that matter. So my interpretation of this is my opinion, and other people may differ from me, and that's perfectly cool. But you can't look for clinical deterioration in patients who have a median age of 37 years of age, people who are one year younger than I am. Both you and I know quite well, given because again, my the, patient, the, the population of folks who listen to this podcast are in healthcare. We're doctors, we're nurses, we're, we're residents, we're respiratory therapists, we're healthcare personnel. And we know that in our ICUs, we don't see, and, and even in our hospitals for that matter, we don't see 37-year-old patients who have a BMI less than 30. Why? Because these patients, generally speaking, I don't speak in absolutes because in medicine, there are no absolutes outside of not even sometimes you could call a time of death and then somebody gets a pulse like a minute later. But aside from that, patients who are median age of 37 and a BMI, median BMI of 26 do extremely well with COVID. They recover. They do fine. So let's dive into this a little, a little bit further. Okay. Because I'm getting my rant out of my way, but um, I, I just want to get that off my chest as you, as you continue to listen to this podcast. The conclusions to this clinical trial state, and I'm going to read this directly off the paper, amongst, excuse me, among adults with mild COVID-19, a five-day course of ivermectin compared to placebo did not significantly improve the time to resolution of symptoms, end quote. At the end of the day, both both you and I, we really don't care about the resolution of symptoms. I know people who are at home feeling crummy from COVID do care about that, but that's that's not at least in my opinion, that's not what we should be looking for. We need to avoid people ending up in the hospital and avoiding them dying. And this study did not look at that whatsoever. So you can't state in good faith that this trial answers that question. It's not the right patient population. And and in fact, looking at symptoms is not even the right endpoint. I mean, at the time of randomization, when they enrolled the people into the study, 61.5% of patients in the ivermectin group were not hospitalized, and they also had no limitation whatsoever to their activities. They were walking around, they were probably quarantined, but they had no limitation to their activities. I mean, that's, (laughs) you you can't look at these people and say, oh yeah, you know, uh, how are we going to decrease mortality and all that, which again, it wasn't the right end point to this, but my point is that we're, we're looking at the wrong, we're looking at the wrong thing. And I, I don't think I need to clarify this anymore. These patients were able to continue living their lives with no issues with COVID. Again, median age of 37, young people, probably your age and my age. 
And so this is another one of these clinical trials that I wish was positive, but unfortunately it's a negative trial. And so this is going to get a lot of negative press by people who do not know how to interpret data. And like I said, it was published yesterday and, you know, it doesn't, okay, fine. You can say, yes, it does not help to uh, improve the resolution of symptoms, but Again, I, I just don't care that this that this really uh, I don't think that this endpoint really matters at the end of the day. So you might again you might disagree with me, but that's okay. Um, there have been numerous studies that have come out on ivermectin. I have read a good good deal of them, but my my buddy Salim over at RebelEM.com he has a very good compendium where he analyzed each one of these studies. And he did a much better job than I did. So I definitely recommend, and I'll put, put it down in my show notes, that you go down to Rebel EM and look at his study. As much as I might disagree with the endpoints of this study, I still have to tip my hat to the authors and researchers over in Colombia. Mi, mi, gente, o, o, mi gente en Colombia, ojalá que estén bien por allá. Eh, because they were able to randomize patients to receive either ivermectin at 300 micrograms per kilogram of body weight orally for five days versus placebo in a double blind study. And again, their primary outcome was to determine if ivermectin was able to help resolve symptoms faster than placebo in a 21 day follow up period. But if you actually read the study, they actually had to change their endpoints because again, there wasn't a uh, they didn't have the right amount of statistical power and all sorts of other stuff that you know is listed in there that you should definitely read for yourself but again what did they find at the end no difference in any of the outcomes but do you really <laughs> does one really expect for there to be a difference in uh the outcomes of symptoms in people who are otherwise healthy again i must state that these um these these patients are healthy for the most part let me let me pull up the the demographics here excuse me for a second again patients who are more than uh greater than or equal to 65 years of age were only four percent of patients only four percent of patients were over 65 years of age so and and the vast majority of these patients 88.5 percent of patients have private insurance so it's not like it was uh and again, I don't want to state that I know the the demographics of the people in Colombia what the healthcare system there is like, but only 1.5% of patients in the in the ivermectin group were uninsured. So that's just that's just some of the key details here. Continuing on with the baseline demographics, we know that the risk factors for having severe COVID and eventually dying from COVID include obesity, hyper, hypertension and diabetes of which 18.5 percent of the patient population were obese 14 percent had hypertension and only five percent had diabetes again these are not the patients who end up getting sick these are not the patients who end up coming to the hospital so whatever that, that's just my quick take on this I'm not going to continue wasting your time looking further into the study. I'm actually surprised that JAMA went ahead and published this. I'm also surprised at the amount of people who look like they want this therapy to fail. I mean, I honestly do not have any idea whether this treatment actually does work or it doesn't work. There's no denying that. There's no robust randomized control trial looking at ivermectin showing beneficial results that are practice changing. But at the same time, this is not, in my opinion, a negative trial for ivermectin. And I don't have to repeat my rationale as to why. But if this trial would have been conducted in patients in whom, like many trials have done in the past, where they looked at patients who were greater than or equal to 65 years of age, hypertensive, diabetes, uh, obesity, hyperlipidemia, all the things that we know from clinical experience that lead to poor outcomes, if it would have been that patient population, then we could have a conversation. Until then, this study, in my opinion, as, as much as... I have to tip my hat again to the authors, nothing against them in particular. I think it's more the fault of JAMA and the people who are putting this out to the press as if, you know, this is an argument against ivermectin. That's my take. Again, I couldn't, I could be wrong, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.